Hello, everyone. Well, about 10 years ago, uh, when I was in the, in the midst of tuning my 1985 Saab 100, I was trying to approach my tuning scheme a little differently than normal. And I ended up uh, installing easy, the Easy K ignition system onto the car at the time. Um, at that time, I was learning how to tune fuel injection systems, and I managed to hack the Easy K and use my, uh, the mapping software that I wrote in order to tune the Easy K um, to to ultimately get to the uh, the goal of um, on a fully adjustable electronic timing. Anyway, I made a video about that, and I got a lot of res uh, positive response and a lot of inquiring minds, uh, you know, reached out and I even ended up uh, uh, tuning a few easy Ks for some, uh, some viewers, uh, by mail, they sent me their easy K and I tuned it. I put a tune on their forum for their turbo car. Um, so hopefully, um, given that that video has been out and a lot of people have viewed it, uh, you know, hopefully a lot of people have managed to get easy K on their car or found different ways to get rid of the archaic timing on that engine. So I use that system, honestly, until that 1985 died. We have a new Saab 100 now, obviously, and I wanted to, again, approach tuning a little differently than normal. Uh, this time, I wanted to get rid of the distributor. For no other reason other than the Easy K system, I ended up selling to a friend of mine, and um, he is uh, hopefully very happy with the system. And because of that, I wanted to try something different yet again. So we have the engine out of the car right now, and really all I needed to do was replace an oil seal, but really we know that's not exactly the case. There's a few things I needed to do in order to set up for my new ignition system. So the ignition system that I decided to go with was the 1988 only direct ignition system. So a few Saab videos, uh, maybe about a year ago, a few Saab videos back, uh, you'll see that I bought, I managed to find a DI 1988 box from the United Kingdom, from eBay, I think it was. Uh, I got that sent down and I immediately started gathering the rest of the parts to put that system together to put on the car. So the DI 1988 system was bespoke for one year only. It was on Europe or certain European model Saab 9000s with the B202 engine. Um, they had a LH Jetronic fuel, inje fuel injection system. They used the normal APC system. Um, you know, this one, the, this system, and then they used the direct ignition system and all three of these systems were separate and standalone and worked together to make this engine run the way it did. So it was very cool that I was able to oh, slap on a direct ignition system without having to convert to Trionic. Obviously, people are screaming at their screen now going, why don't you just convert the car to Trionic? Well, yeah, I understand that you convert the car to Trionic. I have the knowledge. I have the supplies. I have you know, the cash to do it if I need to do it. Uh, you know, I understand that, you know, not converting to Trionic, it makes life a lot harder. And again, that's what Easy K was as well. It was a different approach to getting to the same end result, if you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. Well, with the Easy K system, stuff is really well documented in manuals because they use the Easy K system on all the non-turbo sobs from 1986 until like, uh, 92, 93, or whatever. So the system is really well documented, easy to find information on, um, lots of parts available. You can get it. I was able to get parts, spare computers, some wreckers, and all sorts of stuff so that I, if I screwed up chipping one, I could just throw another computer, and it wasn't a big deal. Unfortunately, because the 1988 DI system is so rare and so hard to find, I really have to do my research and very carefully put the system together to make this all to come, make this all to come together. Looking for information in North America was completely and utterly fruitless. Um, people, a lot of people don't even, didn't even know what the system existed, told me that the system was experimental and never released. Um, told me that there was no manuals available, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I ended up spending a lot of time on Google Translate on old Swedish 
and Danish forums. And eventually I came down to a, a good understanding of how I could actually make this work. Now we're five minutes into this video right now and I understand this is not, interested, not interesting for almost anybody. So we're gonna get right down. One of the biggest issues was finding all the pieces that I need to put this DI system together. So I put together a list for everyone to see so that if a system like this is of, of any, you know, if, if somebody's curious and wants to try this, they at least have something, something to go by because this, this took so long to put together using Google Translate and looking on 15 year old, even 20 year old posts in forums. So you're gonna need the following, basically the following SOB part numbers you will need in order to put this system together. We're gonna to start at the top, okay? You're gonna need the DIECU. They had a they had a handful of them, different ones. Some of them had catalytic converters. You know, some of them didn't, so they had different part numbers for those. Um, a couple of them part numbers got superseded. A couple of them I can't quite remember what the part number is, but anyway. So these are the, these are the part numbers you're looking for. These two here are gonna be your most common ones. I ended up with a seven nine seven in my case. The direct ignition system uses map sensor for load. So it has inside of it, it has a map that's that's RPM versus map. So the map sensor that this system will use is 7538697. It was originally a Magneti Morelli two bar sensor. Couldn't find any direct, you know, uh, direct parts for that right away until I started looking up the other fitment of the Magneti Morelli sensor. Lancia Delta, Ford Sierra, Ford Escorts, Maseratis. So it was used in a few cars. Um, it's labeled also as this APS0203 sensor. Um, pretty expensive to buy that sensor online. I ended up buying mine from China. It was 20 bucks, give or take, and looked everybody as good as I'm sure the original sensor did. Um, if you want to get a legit one, it's going to be about you know 100, 100 euro. For one, I had no intention of spending 100 euro on a freaking map sensor. I'm sure the Chinese one will give the computer the information it needs to set the timing. The next part you're gonna need is a crankshaft position sensor. The direct ignition system does not use a distributor. And as such, you will have no Hall effect signal for your RPM. This direct ignition system uses the um, crankshaft position sensor behind the pulley. So there's a couple part numbers given for those. Basically any of the EZK non-turbo SOBs, you know, the, the two liter or the 2.1 liter engines, they'll all have that sensor that you need. So get yourself one of those. Um, chances are when you get one of those, the sensor is gonna be on its way out or already on its way out, like mine is. The sensor element, the actual part, is a Honeywell 4AV19F. You can get that on various, it's, it's, a, it's an industrial Hall effect sensor, so it's used in lots of stuff. Um, it used to be about 30 bucks. It's like quadrupled in price. It's ridiculous. It's like a hundred over $100 for that sensor now, which is absolutely stupid. It's just a basic Hall effect sensor, so that's just the, you know, the world that we live in right now. Um, don't really get it. But uh, I'm probably going to end up getting mine from Mauser Electronics. I think they're about 125 Canadian, which is just a mind-boggling amount of money for a Hall Effect sensor. But uh, whatever, I need it. And then once you get that sensor, you would just splice into the original harness. Um, in my case, I'm building a harness from scratch, so I don't need. I can just put whatever connector on there I want to. The next thing you're going to need is an oil pump housing because the crank, because this crank sensor fits behind the pulley, you need oil pump housing to be able to accept that sensor. So it turns out, um, if you have a 1990 or above Saab, uh, Saab 900, you already have that oil pump housing. So in my case, I actually wasted the 40 or 50 bucks getting the housing. When I took the, when I took the uh, housing off that engine, because it's a 92, I realized, oh crap, I could have saved myself the 50 bucks and not actually bought that at all. Um, ideally you want to get, if you're going to get the housing, you should get the gears that came with it so that if there's any wear that, you know, everything kind of lines up and ideally you want to get the hardware. I have some extra hardware, but, uh, keep that stuff around. The next part, which was particularly frustrating for me 
was the crankshaft pulley. It took me a while to acquire one of these. There's a couple part numbers. 7581762 is the official 1988 DI pulley number. You're never going to find that. You're just not. And maybe if you're in Europe or something, you'll be able to find it. Um, the part number that you're going to be looking for is an 8789315. And it was the crankshaft pulley that's on the non-turbo engine. The reason you need a different pulley is because the sensor has to mount behind the pulley. So it's a different pulley than what the normal turbo engines came with. So basically you're looking for a crankshaft pulley um, that was meant for the EZK ignition system engines. So that's any of the B212i engines or any of the non-turbo basically after 1990. So there's a few aftermarket parts that work. Again, if you're in North America trying to do this conversion, all of the cross-references and all the manuals are incorrect. Just don't even look at this document. These are the correct numbers if you're looking for an aftermarket pulley. Do not buy a PB1424 just because the internet tells you it will fit. It will not fit. So use a PB1425. So here's your MTC number if you want an MTC pulley. And the ATP pulley is that one. This is actually the pulley I ended up with. I did end up buying a brand new pulley. I didn't want to put used parts on here because I just, frankly, I I have no, I, I don't need the car running right away so I can wait for a new one to come up. Little note there, if you use an MTC pulley, you do need an MTC branded aperture disc. And that was the next thing that was very frustrating. So the aperture disc is actually what the sensor senses. It's like the trigger wheel that fits onto this pulley so that the so you can get the crank position. So there's a couple different aperture discs. The official 1988 DI one is a 9118001. Again, you're probably not gonna be able to find that unless you're in Europe. The one that I was able to get in North America is a 9117177. This is the aperture disc that fits your 2.3 turbo engines um, from like 1990 to 1993. So that is uh, the, the one that I decided to go with. Um, again, I have the note here, MTC pulleys require their own branded aperture disc. So if, again, if you get an MTC pulley, you need to look in MTC's catalogs to find out which aperture disc you need. And I'll, uh, I'll show you real quick uh, what those are. The next thing you need is a DI cassette. Nothing specific here. A black or red one will work. Um, the DI system doesn't use a knock sensor yet because it was far too early for that. Now, if you're picky like I am, I'm going to get myself uh, four of the little rubber boots, 7480-056. Those are pretty cheap. And depending on if you're using a harness, or building your own harness, you may need that cable harness, which I call that the DI conversion harness. Um, it just makes things easier. I'm, like I said, I'm going to make my own harness, so I don't need that anyway. And if you're baller like me, you're getting rid of the distributor. You need that out, so that you're going to be left with a hole. Well, you don't want a hole, so you need to plug that hole. There is an official Saab part number for that, and it will have a seal. If you have the aluminum version, like I have, It'll have, you need to get that seal. If you have the plastic version, which most, most cars have probably had, eh, these are the two part numbers available for that. Well, let's go have a look at what the direct ignition system looks like all put together. Well, there it is. That's the whole system at a glance. Obviously, there's no wiring here. So yeah, we have the uh, oil pump pulley. Um, that's actually from my 1992 engine. It's in super good shape, so I'm gonna go with that one. You can see it's a little different than the regular ones because it's got this little cutout and it's got threaded holes to put the crank position sensor. So obviously this comes with the gears for the oil pump. Um, we'll fit back, back together. So your crank position sensor, here we is. So this is the whole effect sensor itself. There's your little Honeywell sensor that costs like 120 bucks. I don't know why. And then again, I, I'm not going to use this type of connector. I'm going to use a junior timer connector. But so again, it depends on what, how you want to put the system together. You can make your own harness or whatever. This, this is the main reason uh, that I bought this sensor is because it had this. So this is obviously the housing that fits into here to mount the sensor on couple little screws to hold that on. Now, 
what, how does the sensor, you know, this, this obviously goes into there with the sensor and this obviously spins around. Here's your crank pulley. So here is the aperture disc you need to run this system. This aperture disc has two large cuts and one small cut. This is the disc you need for direct ignition. All direct ignition cars will have this aperture disc. This obviously goes in there and the Hall effect sensor picks up that as the RPM signal. And the reason you need the new pulley, this is the brand new ATP pulley that I bought. You need a different pulley because regular saw 900 pulleys don't have a provision to mount that aperture disc on there. So this aperture disc is a genuine Saab one because the ATP pulley requires a genuine product. So this is a genuine Saab brand new one. Fits on there beautifully, we'll mount that. Obviously this is your air conditioning pulley, so that's gonna obviously mount to the front of your main pulley. Cause obviously your Saab 900 has four, four V-belts instead of three. So that mounts on there and that completes your, basically your pulley pack. So you can see I have this little bag of aperture discs over here. These are, if you're in North America, this is what they're gonna tell you is gonna work. And it doesn't. You can see this aperture disc is the Easy K disc. It has two large cutouts and that is it. This, these are, because these are MTC, they actually don't fit. You'd have to, you'd have to mill that out or whatever a little bit to get that to fit. So these are what people are peddling as the correct one to fit your turbo DI engine. And I bought a second one because I thought they had sent me the wrong one the first time. Turns out, no, it turns out that their catalogs are just wrong. So the part numbers on that page I showed back earlier, those are the part numbers you need to find. Those are basically garbage to me. The direct ignition computer, uh, as you saw in a previous video, looks identical to a old APC box, except it says DI. So there's your direct ignition system. This is the map sensor. It's uh, an exact copy of the Magneti Morelli sensor. It's a uh, two bar and as a perfectly linear voltage, you know, pretty basic sort of stuff. So there's that. And now we have the plug. So that goes into cylinder head to plug where the distributor used to live. And uh, obviously this one's gonna need a new uh, O-ring, but whatever. I've, I've had this for years waiting for this day. So it finally gets its time. And of course we have the direct ignition cassette to complete the whole package. So to, um, to, stop, uh, to start uh, winding down this uh, um, ever increasingly length video here, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out. I will be putting this system on the car um, eventually, I don't know exactly when, but I know this engine has to go back in there first and I want to drive it a bit before I do this. But in the meantime, I'm going to be starting to get the wiring harness together, start building that. And if anybody has any questions, please reach out. There, there is, I do not have a wiring diagram for the system. However, I've read all those Swedish and Danish forms and I have a really good idea on how to hook the system up. Please do not use the wiring diagram given out on North American forms because it is incorrect and you will fry that box 100% if you do it. So please take my advice, either use Google Translate to find the wiring diagram or just reach out to me and I will provide you with the wiring diagram. I like may put another video together for this, I may not. So if I don't put another video together, reach out, I can give you the wiring diagram. If there is enough interest, I can provide more information. But anyway, if anybody has more questions about parts or where to get them, I have a couple of little sources I can let you know. But uh, anyway, long enough video, and we'll uh, talk to you all again. Bye for now.